It's just not happening, guys. We need a makeover. Cinderella Hair sponsors Katie. Katie Price is a busy woman. She's a model, author, fashion designer, and a single mum of three. But she's not finished there. Despite her hectic lifestyle, Katie's always on the lookout for new adventures and opportunities. We still need a tracksuit to match this. OK. She's fought hard to stay at the top of her game, and she's not giving up anytime soon. Enjoy the show. This time, Katie's catching up with the man who kick-started her reality TV career. Just so many people have had their fame and gone, and I sometimes think, why am I still here? What have I done different? Because oh, I don't know what I've done different. She's spotting talent at a beauty industry trade show. Did they put three hot men on here on purpose to get the girls here, or what? Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> sad. And chucking away her prize-winning past. Sexiest people, 1998. Might have been the sexiest then, but certainly not now. Sunny day in central London, and the Paps are gathering at Radio One Studios, awaiting Katie's arrival. She's here with Mum Amy and pal Sally to take part in a challenge for the charity Sport Relief, running a mile on the treadmill while broadcasting live with DJ Nick Grimshaw. Isn't it 1.66 a mile? I hope not. I thought it was. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> it is. You lot have been cheating. One mile is 1.66. Katie's been told the treadmill operates in kilometres, so she's convinced her fellow athletes haven't been running a full mile. Hey, I'm Phil, by the way. I'm taking care of this today. Nice Hiya. How's it going? You are right. But you've got your bloody thing wrong. Uh, I bet you should check on that. What's that? They haven't been doing a mile. It's 1.66. Oh, it, it, it is It makes a, a big difference. It isn't, because I've done it yesterday on the treadmill to see if I could do it. So um, it's Nick Grimshaw who's presenting. Okay. So you'll hear that in your headphones, and we've got a little m a mic, Madonna mic, so you'll be able to talk to him from the uh, treadmill. Okay. So, oh, she'll do a mile easy. The trouble is, she's got an audience, so she might fall off a bit backwards. You never know. Jesus, I must have put on weight. It's time for Katie to take to the treadmill. She's Look at that screen there. She'll end up having a swim in the water in a minute. She'll, 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 end, she'll end up in the sea, though. So far. Uh, we now cross live to the office to say hello to Katie Price. Hi. Hey. How are you? Heavily breathing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I imagine whenever you are running a mile in an office in front of loads of people and being filmed online, the next thing you'd want to happen is me to talk to you. And I reckon they've been cheating because I'm sure it's 1.66 as a mile and they only want us to run 1.00. Um, so you do 1.66 then? That's all right, I'm doing the same as everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of hair going on today, Katie, look at that. Lovely, is it flowing in the wind? It looks beautiful, <laughs> and you've got like a beach background. It's kind of like Baywatch going beautiful. on there. Real nice. <sighs> well, enjoy your run, and we'll speak to you after. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs> so we've, we've figured out that the machine upstairs, the treadmill, it is set to miles, Katie Price. So you are doing a mile. Don't worry, it's not on kilometres. My train alive. <laughs> If I run along the seafront, the first mile is always the hardest. Oh, you have to get into your so breath. Katie's proved she can run, but she can't hide from the scrum of paps and fans outside. She's ignoring me, man. That's not right. Katie, 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 Kat
She's done her bit for charity, but you can't please everyone, as one overly keen autograph hunter proves. Oi, 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 oi! Oh, is that legal? What are you going to do? It's in the paper. Fuck you, man! Oh, my God, please! After her fundraising efforts at Radio 1 yesterday, today, charity begins at home. Katie's having a clear out, selling her old belongings to help raise money for good causes. Over the years, she's accumulated a barn full of items that haven't made it into the house, along with all the old toys and clothes her three children have managed to gather too. Every house I've been at, I've been in the same situation. If I've had a garage, it all goes in the garage. If I've had a spare room, it goes in the spare room, just like every other person on the planet. So now I'm just going to get rid of a load of shit now. I don't, I don't need it. You don't think I bought this box at a DIY shop for nothing, do you? I bought it to fill it with shit. I mean, honestly, look in there. Actually, I do like it in there, because it's all my sewing stuff. That is a good box, that one. Goodies. All right, let me find a box. This box. For example, tell me why on earth, okay, do I need baby bottles, SMA milk, I don't even know what that is, a potato head that I haven't even watered that grows. Here to help tackle the pile are some handy removal men and the woman charged with minimalising these belongings, Polly Gould, who runs Katie's online auction shop. It's something that Kate wanted to do for many years. She kept, obviously, you know, finishing with clothes or shoes or what have you and she um, she kept them over the years and then two and a half years ago we set up the shop and I've just been selling them on there for her ever since and she's put, she gives all the net profit to charity. Well, I never know where to start. Oh what's in there? Oh you could sell that, that's what Alex got me. Fucking not wearing that. What's that guy? Okay. Well, that, how do I know that's gone off? It's been going for since 1584. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I have sold quite a lot of stuff already out of here. Sofas and tables yeah. and pictures. and. But it's just trying to get into it. I have to climb over boxes. Here, I bought a LiPo vacuum. Put that in the eBay <laughs> I think it's vacuumed itself. Oh. It's not in the box. <laughs> Oh, hello, there's my teeth box. <laughs> Nothing in them. No, I haven't got dentures, they're just <laughs> night guards to keep your teeth light, which I don't wear. But there's nothing exciting in there. It really is my Jacobs. <laughs> what the hell are they doing in there? <laughs> Have they gone off? Yeah. Nah, they wouldn't have. They've been sealed in a box. It's It'll be a sell by day. No, they're soft. Oh. <laughs> I don't need business cards. I am a business card. She's very business driven and I could definitely see her on a market stall. <laughs> Del boy. <laughs> you tell me no one would buy that? Yeah. Of course they would. Of course they would. She's a massive hoarder. She has everything from trainers, flip flops, high heels. Yeah. Oh, do you think you'll be able to sell that on eBay? No, that is disgusting. <laughs> and the other thing she'll do is I'll get a size seven come in. Obviously, Kate's a four. But if Kate's gone to a shop and she likes a pair of shoes and they've only got it in a seven, she'll buy it. What is all... Oh, that's all costumes or press calls I've done through the years. I never get rid of all that. I keep it all. Look. Which book was that one? I might say on it. Sapphire, was it? That was my costume I wore for Sapphire. It's just nice to have memorabilia of jobs that I've done through the years. She's definitely got such a diverse wardrobe. Bride. <laughs> Did you sell that on eBay? No. 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 We've been all that. Junior might like that. Yeah. Although it's cassettes. Don't have cassettes anymore, do you? Amongst Katie's barn full of possessions are things she's received from fans and admirers. Now, what do I do with things like that? I'm not being, like, you know, someone's painted that for me. My mum would go, you can't get rid of them. There's no point. This is, I want to clear this file, otherwise I'm being a hoarder. I don't want this shit. I'm not even looking at it.
that was from the jungle. The map from one of my challenges. Live TV. Sexiest people, 1998. That was me, 1998. Well, I might have been the sexiest then, but I'm certainly not now. There's a lot to dig through, but hidden amongst the junk are some of Katie's most treasured memories that she can't bear to part with. Ah, my granddad's funeral card. The commendation. Music, show me heaven, by Katie Price. I sang at my granddad's funeral. Oh, look at these little pictures of Harvey. How chap is that? <laughs> He's one week old there. Two days old. Twelve days old. I didn't even know he was blind at this point. When he was six weeks old, I found out he's blind. And it's weird seeing him tiny, doesn't it? Yeah. When he's such a big one. Digging through a decade's worth of belongings has unearthed plenty of memories for Katie but as the day draws to a close, they've barely made a dent. And the remaining pole will have to wait for another day. Still to come, Harvey's all smiles when his trip to the dentist earns him a treat. If you're a good boy, what do you get at the end? It's a cupcake. That's right. <laughs> While Katie can't quite grin and bear some impertinent questions. Do you still think that your fame is growing, or do you think you've had your best years? You cheeky sod. Sorting through her old belongings has brought back special memories for Katie. In 2002, she gave birth to her son, Harvey, and at the same time, her career as a reality TV star was born. Inspired by her trip down memory lane, Katie's invited filmmaker Richard Mesa to visit. He made the first documentaries about her back in 2002. The thing that I really remember about Kate was that she had a larger than life character and that's why I was interested in her from a sort of documentary making point of view right from the outset. How did this precocious little girl turn into Britain's most infamous party animal? See all the paparazzi, when they take pictures it's me going, Ugh. not tonight though. I'm pissed as a fart but I'm still walking. I know they still show that documentary and I, I would cringe if I watched it because it's that was me as a 22-year-old. I'm like 34 in me. I'm an adult, a mum of three now, completely different. Um, when I say completely different, I mean I'm grown up now, I think. Well, I'm grown up in some ways. Um, but yeah, of course I'm different then. I was like, I regard myself as a baby then. I'm really keen to see how she has changed as she's become older. She will have a completely different perspective on the world. She probably looks different. One person who's looking forward to meeting Richard again is Katie's mum, Amy. I think when Richard sees Kate, he will probably think, well, oh, she's got a little bit older. But I think he will probably think, no, she hasn't changed at all. And I think they'll probably just pick up just like that where they left off. Because they were quite close anyway. They, used, they got them really well. Amy! <laughs> Come on, you. Oh, Hello. you look different. Oh. You what do you mean? Lovely. Oh, you mean? Oh, mind your head. Oh. I forgot you're tall. Come on, then. <laughs> wow. Wow, it's a nice place, isn't it? It's all right. Not much different than when... Do you remember um, when she was at Point Inns? Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, cos that was like a bit like this, but all pink, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah. Was it so ten years ago? It is about ten years ago, since we, we made those documentaries, isn't it? How many yeah. did you make in the end? I can't even remember. I haven't Can seen you? a lot of them. I haven't seen them since you've done them. Oh, well, we made three. And, um, yeah, the first one was about Kate and then she got pregnant and oh. it ended with her getting pregnant um, with Harvey and then the yeah. second one was about having the baby. Yeah. And then the third one was sort of... Um, well, I think the third one was commissioned because the other two had been such a success and, and it was kind of like following her as she tried to sort of, oh, launch her singing career. That was it, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, I'm glad you think that's funny. Is, no, I think that's great. Yeah. I mean, I, I think she's got a nice voice. That's what I think. Mm, that's why you laughed. Well, I laughed because um, I, I know that she's, you know, she's always wanted to be a singer, hasn't she? And I suppose it never quite happened for her, has it? No, she just enjoys singing. Are you still, like, really 
pushing that because you were pushing that back in the day. What was you? pushing the singing? Oh, yeah, you no, should. No, I've given up with that. I don't have to push her to do anything now. She just does it all, doesn't she? But as Richard's chat with Amy it's goes on and on, system, it's clear some things in the Price household don't change, like Katie's timekeeping. Where's Kate? Oh, Kate, she'll be down in a minute. She's like what she normally is. I had completely So nothing's changed. You, have you I forgotten? I was just sat thinking that um, it's been a long time since I've had to wait an hour for somebody. Oh, I know. And then I suddenly thought, hang on a minute, the last time was about ten years ago with Kate. Oh. Right, Ricky? Ricky? How are you? Oh. Hiya, Sally. Sally. Oh, but Kate, yeah, how much down. weight have you lost? He has an easy no, thing. And you don't look like a hippie anymore. No, I said hair, that to him. But you, you got grey. Like, but you were. Like I was fat. Do I, do I look more plastic? Well, you do a bit. Oh, fuck off, Richard. <laughs> You've definitely had something done to your lips there. They look like a bum stuck on my face, like that. Do you remember how um, you yeah, used to go you. on at him all the time? Did I give you mm. a hard time? Tell the truth. I think so, yeah, but it was all part of the sort of chemistry of it, wasn't it? But really? what, what, was, what did I give you a hard time about? Uh, I think you, you, you kind of uh, found it irritating me being there asking questions. Or was it when you asking, you asking me questions? Asking all difficult the fucking questions, time. Yeah. When did you first discover that you, that you wanted to be? Oh, oh, Rich, and how many times have I answered this? Well, we're just doing different questions. I know. Like... I've always wanted to be a model, Richard. <laughs> he's still got long hips. I remember he used to have trousers where his crutch was down there I then. I you fancied, Richard. You seem to remember no. well for a long well, time. Well, I did. I spent all my time with him. So you 11 were... feet? I remember I used to spend all my time with him. Because oh, you were always stroppy. Yeah. And you lucky. Like weren't you? We had a connection, didn't we? We did have a connection. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See you later. See you Richard, later. I'm, I'm, hopefully I'll be back in time. Well, if you hurry up and stop All chatting, right, you will be. You was actually oh, filming yeah, me through my it. wild, like, clubbing days. Well, I was only young. How old was I? About 9, 20 or something? 22? Yeah, you were about 22 when I first started. The very first oh, time I met oh, you... Oh, shit, what? ...was um, at the... Um, <laughs> w when you were standing as a candidate in the general election. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, Do you remember that? God. That was so... That was ridiculous, My teeth yes. were massive then. Yeah. <laughs> So do you think you've changed then since since I knew you ten years ago? In what way? I've probably grown up like a bit more knowledge on things. Yeah. Because that's it natural. You do that with age, didn't you? It's funny, people. Everyone I meet, it's like, what? Well, well, I don't think I'm going to change. I think people think because you might have earned more money, so it's going to change you. Who gives a shit? Yeah, because I might have better curtains than I had in my first set. I might have better wallpaper. So it's still, still me though. Mm. I could live without it if I have to. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes I drive up these roads and think, oh, wouldn't it be nice just to have that nice little house? And then I think, Kate, okay, you couldn't have that because, you know, where would be your privacy from the front door to mm. the road? Or if I lived in, like, in a little coldy sack, it would just be aggro. When I was first filming with you, you, you were obviously becoming more famous. And then you went on I'm a Celebrity and then it sort of went up to a new level after that. Do you still think that your fame is growing or do you think you've had your best years? You fucking cheeky sod. No, I'm not being cheeky. <laughs> say I'm fucking No, you're suggesting that no, you're suggesting I'm insinuating something there. There's not one time, because it's just... Everything's gone so quick, I can just remember everything just like that, like we all can. I don't look at it and wake up and think, oh, I'm famous. I don't know any different. It's been a gradual thing as well. So I've been modest since I was 17, 18. Yeah. So this is all I know. Just so many people have, like... Had their fame and gone, and I sometimes think, why am I still here? What have I done different? Because oh, I don't know what I've done different. It's really weird. But you're quite savvy, aren't you? I must be. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know what it is why I'm still about. I ask myself that sometimes. I go, what have I done different? Because if anything, I've been naughty, apparently, you know, going to not. In other words, I haven't been manufactured. You know, no. lots of people have been um, groomed. You know, you mustn't do this. And when you go to this party or just behave, you know, you've got all these people here. You know, I've never been a networker. I've just sort of thought to myself, OK, if I go to a party, I don't give a fuck who anyone is. If I want to get a drink and make a fool of myself, that's what I'll do. And that's what I've done. Mm -hmm. I've never gone, oh, my God, are you this person? Oh, I better suck up to you because I might get on the cover of this mag. Or mm -hmm. I've never been like that. I don't know. I think that's the only way I can say that I've been. I've just been myself. I've never put on a show for anyone. Just been myself. Mm -hmm. What do you think? No, I think you've just been yourself too. I think that's been your, perhaps your cleverest, your, your biggest asset in a way. No, 
it was really good meeting Richard. I could have sat there for longer, um, just reminiscing about the old times. You know, he remembers things that I only remember when he triggers them. I hope that she's happy. And um, I hope that, you know, in 10 years' time, she continues to be happy because, obviously, she's still a very attractive young woman, even though she's in her mid-30s. But presumably, you know, the photo shoots will continue to ebb away in terms of her modelling, you know, and she's, she's, got to, she's got to be happy with herself when she reaches middle age. Middle age can be quite a daunting master. Nice for to coming. see you again. Yeah, it was good to meet him. He looks taller, slimmer, greyer, younger, and not a hippie. No, it was good to meet him. Bye. Thanks Take care of yourself. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. Katie's busy week continues at Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital. She's brought Harvey in for his dental checkup, but as the family arrive late, they face a wait to see the dentist. I think Harvey loves coming up because it's like an adventure, a day off school, and it's something different, and he knows it doesn't hurt him, so he enjoys it. If he doesn't eat sweets and that, unless he mixes them and hides around the house with them. But he's healthy, all the kids are. They have fresh foods, they're healthy, so... I know he wouldn't have problems with his teeth because he is healthy. We don't really come from a family. He didn't, didn't bring me up no, on sweets either. not at all. We wouldn't have them in the house. Well, you did. You had wagon wheels. Oh, well, that's not sweets. <laughs> what is it, then? Well, it's a biscuit. It's still sweet. It's like the Jaffa cake advert, isn't it? Is it a biscuit or is it a cake? Well, either way, you had them in the house. No, we're only wagon wheels. But while Harvey might be a model patient, his mum isn't a big fan of the dentist. When I was seven is when I broke my tooth on my brother's skateboard, hence why I have veneers. If I never went on my brother's skateboard, I would have really nice, straight, perfect teeth. So I've never liked the dentist because from the age of seven, when I cracked my tooth, I haven't had very nice experiences since. As the wait continues, it becomes clear a hospital corridor isn't the place to be. If, like Harvey, you hate the sound of slamming doors. Oh, the door's going to bang again. And that would be 12 more times it would bang. Ever since Harvey's been younger, there, there's been different things that annoy him. I remember once, for a long time, it used to be cutlery, cutlery, knife and forks, banging, even just a little bang of them would wind him up. And now his thing is doors. Any kind of door banging, he goes nuts unless he does it himself. If he does it himself, it's fine, but it's the unexpected. But people have got to remember, when you haven't really got good eyesight, any loud kind of bang or anything, because you can't visually see, or it's, it's going to shock you. Door. You don't realise until you hear, and you know that you're, he's conscious of doors, how many doors actually do slam? About six months. Yeah, just leave this. Uh, what are you doing, wiping your nose on Mummy's top? What did you wipe your nose on Mummy's top for? So it's only the doors. Come here. Come here. Let me cover me down and I'll get here. Mm -hmm. It's only the doors. After your teeth are cleaned, you get your cake and we sit in the car and there'll be no more doors banging. OK? Yeah. Come on, then. Sorry, Harvey. This way, then. There'll be no more doors for a minute. And Mummy tell you when there's doors banging. The wait is over. It's finally time for Harvey's checkup. Can you open the door? So he he's obsessed definitely with open the door. You can move this as well if you want to. Go on, then, Harvey. Thank you. Good boy. <laughs> Go on. Go on, then, Harvey. I'm just going to dry them with a little bit of air that might tickle. Are you ticklish? Yes. Are you ticklish? A little bit of air like that. It'll be like the wind, like the quad bike, <laughs> in your mouth. Oh, are you ready? Because you can. Oh. 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 <laughs> like two peas in a pod, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, we are. Yeah. <laughs> um, we? What was it, uh, Russell and Gromit? Lovely. Or whatever they're called. Well, if it was, I'd be the better one. You're yeah. a star. <laughs> I'd be the skinnier one. Be the star, yeah, well, you would be, wouldn't you? <laughs> Till you're older. Beautiful. Yeah. Are they, yeah, what, yeah, anything yeah. wrong with them? No. no. It's a little bit of staining. Yeah, yeah what is that? It's, is that lack of vitamins usually, or something? No, it's usually just staining that we pick up from foods and drinks, you know, different mm. colourings, and, <laughs> and it will polish off quite easily. It's all over, and since Harvey's been such a good patient, he's got a treat in store. Do you want to get another sticker? Yeah! Oh, and then if you're a good boy, what do you get at the end? Uh, carrot eight, sir. 
Cupcake. That's right. <laughs> cupcake. The dentist wouldn't mind me offering him a cake because he's got fantastic teeth and they're in a really good condition, the dentist said. He won't need dentures like me. Well, I haven't got dentures when I'm in veneers, but I'll probably have dentures when I'm an old lady. Or pegs. <laughs> this way then, sweet. Oh. <laughs> Still to come, Katie's polishing her social skills on friend Sally as they learn to become nail technicians. You're not a very good nail technician example. Look at the state of your nails. And she's sharpening her eye for talent at a beauty show. Did they put three hot men on it on purpose to get the girls here or what? That's <laughs> very <laughs> sad. Katie's mum, Amy, gave up her job as a PA when Harvey was born to help Katie with his day-to-day -day care. They recently found out that the specialist school he attends is to stop running his year group. So Amy's teamed up with the parents of Harvey's fellow pupils to take on the mammoth task of setting up a free school, a new type of school created by parents. They've asked Katie to take on a very special role. Can we officially request that you consider becoming patron of the school? Well, of course I would. <laughs> Today, Amy, Katie and pal Sally have come to the West London Free School to see what's involved in starting a school from scratch. So we're here today because obviously we want to set up a free school and, um, you know, not just us, there's a group of us and parents. So we're here today looking at a school that is a free school. So we're going to have a look at, well, everything about what happens in a free school. The first lesson of the day comes as a shock to Katie. No chewing gum in the school, ladies. No. I'm sorry. Can I Are you serious? No, I really? I yeah. love it. Oh, do you know, I did it because they got such bad breath, these oh. two. Oh, is she awful? <laughs> awful they have. It's not true. <laughs> Yeah, you've got, I told you not allowed gum, Sally. Kids See, allowed already the free school, they have rules and regulations. And they're all adhered to as well, which is good. Oh, right. yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. After signing in and spitting out, it's time to meet headmaster Thomas Packer. Right, shall we give you a quick tour around? Yes, brilliant. It's not long before Katie gets to grips with some of the strategic planning behind the school. I'm saying here they've got signs about smoking. And where do you think the signs are? Right by the toilets. And why are they by the toilets? Because that's where the kids go to have a sneaky little cigarette. So you had to get all of this in. We were very lucky that a number of parents donated very generously either books or, or funds to oh, the, really? the library. While the headmaster's giving the lowdown on how to teach their potential pupils, Katie's first priority is what to feed them. Well, it's nearly break time. I'm just going to get my pizza slice <laughs> and... Uh... What do, they, right. what do they still have at break times? Uh, they still have the same sort of thing as you're talking about. Pizza do slices, they? Sausage rolls. Oh, let's have a look. Just seeing if it's different menu. from when I was at school. Oh, their lunch today, Mexican beef, tortilla wraps and couscous. Yeah. What would you have? I know what you'd have. What? You'd have the jacket the tank jacket, tuna. Yeah. yeah, I'd have two of them. I'd have the vegetable pasta bag. Oh, and then I'd have sponge. Or it's the pudding size. Yeah. Right. Sponge and custard. Oh, I could eat that. My old school had all this that pulls yeah, out for the gym. And, mm. Yeah. yeah. So not a lot's yeah. changed, really. No, it hasn't. Not, no, not in the yeah. gym way. This school's chairman of governors is journalist and author Toby Young. I was quite chuffed that Katie wanted to come visit the school. Um, I've never met her before, so it was, it was nice to meet her. Um, but I also think that, uh, uh, you know, I'm a big believer in the free school's policy. And I think Katie and her group wanting to set up a school will be good for the policy. It means more people will hear about free schools. Uh, they won't just associate them with, you know, a bunch of middle-class children. Uh, they'll realise that anyone can set up a free school uh, and they're for everybody. Uh, and I think that uh, if Katie and her group successfully set up a free school, that will really encourage a lot of other people to uh, follow in her footsteps. So, I think, you know, I thought I was the, the trailblazer, but I think, you know, if someone like Katie can pull this off, then it could make a huge difference. It could be just the boost the movement needs. Yeah, today was good. We didn't have a fully look around the whole school, but we had a look enough to know, yeah, it's amazing. It's like a private school with some of the gadgets they have for the kids. They've done a really, really good job. Obviously, it's a different kind of school than what we want to set up in the way ours would be for kids with disabilities. It's still really, really early days, so um, one step at a time. You can't jump ahead at things like this, so it was good to see 
what, what you know, this free school is about. Obviously, every school's different. It's a long way. We're only just at the beginning. So, you know, I'm not going to get too enthusiastic because it's just the beginning. You've got to be realistic. So there's lots of obstacles we have to go through. Katie's makeup artist Sally is one of her closest friends and ex-housemates. And today they're spending some quality time together, studying how to apply and paint acrylic nails. Their aim? To become qualified nail technicians. It's a really good course. We've got a really good group going, got some banter going. We're going to have a laugh today and actually do some work. I love it because I've got a new skill, nail technician. Looking forward to it. Where did you just put that? Oh. Even on the tip. And the tip. Yeah. I've known Sally since I was about 18. So, what's that, 15 years? More than that. We met through work um, on a shoot. We hit it off pretty much straight away. Because we spent so much time together going out to do my makeup that we just ended up living together. It just made sense, really. We lived in the bungalow. We had a garden and then we got a dog there. I sound like an old married couple. Right, someone's nicked some of my stuff. I'm not having it. You've nicked it. Sally? We are quite different. She's kind of a lot more forward where I'm, I'm very placid and laid back and I just sort of kind of go with the flow. Sally would always say I would lead her astray, but then anyone would say I'm quite like that. I'd lead anyone astray. If I want to party, everyone parties. You're not a very good nail technician example. Look at the state of your nails. Oh, Hold that pinch in. She's got a very dry sense of humour, um, which I actually quite find it amusing. Oh, yeah, she comes out some right comments, but it's... Uh, yeah, it, I, it doesn't phase me, it's kind of like, I give, I give back as good as I get and vice versa. Nelson. I'm on my second beat. Okay, so, so what, slightly... Sally? I just want to check on getting the right amount. <laughs> Who's interested? What fucking bead you're on? Well, you, obviously not. <laughs> Probably looks from the outside, from people watching us, like, oh, it's a, it's a bit harsh, but that's just the way Kate and I are. We've always been like that together. Oh, yeah. she's used oh. to it. It's banter. <laughs> it's affection, it's like foreplay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, ever, 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 ever argued with Sally. All the times we lived together, I never, ever argued with her. In fact, I've never argued with any of my friends, ever. Ever. Never argued with them. With certain people, you get disagreements. <laughs> but it's all about solving the problems rather than arguing. And sometimes it's my fault, I admit. Stop nicking my nail files. That's your nail file over there. That's mine. Use you, you use it. Someone nick, talking. Nick. <laughs> Their training is complete, and despite all the bickering, this competitive pair consider themselves the perfect match. The thing is with Sally, I always said if she was a man, she'd be my perfect partner. Um, she, she used to say that about me, and funny enough, her husband, she said, is very similar to me, apart from he's got a willy. I think it's true what they say, when you're older you can count your friends on one hand. I think that's definitely true. We've got a close bond, we've been through a lot together. Um, and I'm there, I'm there for her. I always will be. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Shall I? Now she's a qualified industry professional, Katie's come to a beauty trade show in London and the place is packed with thousands of visitors Hello? keen to catch a glimpse of her. Oh. Yeah, I'm right. here. Gonna... Um, we're going to come and find you. Obviously, if you're going to go into a place of young girls or, would you say, my fan base age, they're all interested in the beauty stuff like I am. So, of course, there's going to be people there who are fans and they're going to see you and then the crowd builds and builds. But that's what you get if you go to a place like that. It's very difficult for me to shop and look at everything normal like everybody else. How gorgeous is all of that? Katie's here in a professional capacity. Having just completed her nail technician course, she now wants to stock up on the necessary products. Yeah, these are the ones we want. That's all I need, isn't it? I feel sorry for the first person who's nailed, I think. And while Katie's picking up polish, today's her unofficial graduation ceremony. I'm now getting my certificate as a qualified nail technician. But there's a problem for Katie's fellow student. We've got Sally's here. We've got Sally's here. We'll send, we'll, we'll send them. Aww. Oh, oh no. <laughs> And this is it. You're not doing mine. <laughs> it says that I'm, I'm cool. <laughs> I think she deserves a round of applause. <laughs> and you miss out, Sally, on your certificate. <laughs> Thanks and guys. Thank Thanks. You. Right, let's Thank go. You. Oh, I like that one as well. Katie's stocking up on nail varnish, but it's more than mere product that's catching her eye. That one's nice. 
Alright. Is he a salt or not? Is he a salt or not? It's alright. Uh huh. He's alright. Did they put three hot men on here on purpose to get the girls here or what? That's <laughs> 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 For Katie, there's no such thing as plain old shopping. Every purchase is a potential business opportunity. Yeah, I, I want to get one. I love yeah. these. Oh, cool. We should do a deal where you have my thing on it. I should do a range of these. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think you should. I think I should. I think With think my crowns and that, yeah, and my bows and that. stuff. Got your business card. Is it your company? Yes, it is, yeah. Yeah, we'll do business. When I think of ideas, I think of what my fan base want. And basically, whatever I feel I need, I know other girls would want. So I create it into reality for other people to share it with me. I can't refuse a good-looking man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much. With that spot of business in the bag, it's time for Katie to make her exit. Ooh. Thanks very much. <laughs> Still to come, Katie's making dreams come true at her latest signing. It has been actually one of the most memorable days I've ever had in my life. While work on her latest tattoo is the stuff of nightmares. Part of having a tattoo is the pain. I don't want the pain. <laughs>
Good. I should have got two cheeseburgers. That's nothing in there. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. She's I arrived. She's arrived. Woo. No reaction. <laughs> I always worry if anyone's going to turn up. Yeah, but don't you find on your sign-ins and stuff, as people, as your queue, the queues, people just join it and sort of like yeah, don't want to like miss out. Yeah, this is an industrial estate. Yeah. It's not like a shopping centre. Industrial estate, you actually have to drive here. Mm. You don't have to walk past and go, ooh, I joined the queue just because she's here. That's true. And if no one turns up, I always say, right, I'm going to have to pretend I've fallen over and you have to get an ambulance. <laughs> out there <laughs> and I really would I'd lie on the floor and make up really hurt myself but there's no need to call the emergency services today there's been a healthy turnout for Katie <laughs> thank you very much thank you thanks for waiting Chloe Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. It seems there's one person who's attracting almost as much attention as Katie, her ex-boyfriend Leandro. And if Katie doesn't want him, it seems her fans do, and they're saying it in Spanish. Te amo. Te amo. <laughs> Katie's promotional signings always attract plenty of interest and it's not just the customers who are looking forward to meeting her. Actually, I didn't sleep for her all last night because I was really worried that my alarm wouldn't go off. Everyone thinks that I need to calm down, but I am a big fan and it's a great honour to be here, to be involved with everything today. Hi. Pleased to meet you. And you. Thanks for Thank you very much. Well. Thank you so Jamie, much. Yeah. <laughs> I said hello and it was really nice to meet you and she said nice to meet you too. Thank you. She signed my bag and also I have the card as well and I have the pen she was signing with. Thanks very much, thank you. It has been actually one of the most memorable days I've ever had in my life to be honest. It's It was beyond my expectations really. She said my name. <laughs> but then the sign went really well. It was busy, lots of presents, fan mail. Yeah, it was good, good turnout. Now, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Next time, Katie gets down and dirty in her most punishing physical challenge yet. Oh, look at the state of my extensions. There's a star in the making as Harvey wows the crowds at the Olympic Stadium. <laughs> and Katie road tests her new pink pleasure cruiser. Oh my. Katie was, of course, one of the guest judges in the last series of Britain and Ireland's Next Top Model. The brand new season starts Monday night at 9. And don't forget, we're heading gingerly back into Bedlam Heights tomorrow night at 10 on Sky Living HD, where the spirits are all kicking off in the chapel, obviously.